welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. They lie about what they own and they lie about the environment. But first, the powers that shouldn't be also lie about peace. Ex-Nobel Committee exec regrets Obama Peace Prize. This from USA Today. In a just-released book, Guy Lundestad, director of the Nobel Institute for 25 years until he stepped down last year, said the Nobel Prize Committee had expected the honor to deliver a boost to Obama, something he believes did not happen. Speaking to the Associated Press, Lundestad, who sat in on the secretive committee's meetings but did not have a vote, said the committee, quote, thought it would strengthen Obama and it didn't have this effect. In hindsight, we could say that the argument of giving Obama a helping hand was only partially correct, end quote. He wrote, according to VG, a Norwegian newspaper, the award made by the committee in response to Obama's stated aim of ridding the world of nuclear weapons came only nine months after he took office. Even many of Obama's supporters believed that the prize was a mistake, Lundstad wrote in his book, Secretary of Peace, 25 Years with the Nobel Prize. In that sense, the committee didn't achieve what it had hoped for, he said, noting that Obama rarely talks about the prize himself. Lundstad also claims, this is interesting, James, that the White House even used back channels to find out if they could accept the award in absentia because they knew it was kind of bad and they didn't want to show up to even do it. But... Lundstad actually called a press conference, James, after all of this broke to deny it all. And I know this is a huge shocker to you, right? Oh, it's incredible shock. You wouldn't believe. Uh, what a, I mean, what a turn of events. No, this is, uh, I think, what everyone knows. I think from the moment that it was announced and the, uh, during the announcement, there were audible gasps in the room when they said Barack Obama. I think we've known that this was a ridiculous, I mean, even whatever they were attempting to do with this was a ridiculous ploy. But, I mean, this should not particularly be surprising for an award that, uh, of course, was created by the man who invented dynamite, believing that would bring the world sooner towards peace. Because with such a weapon of destruction, well, no one would ever want to wage war again. Right? Uh, yeah. And of course, the you know, Stalin was uh, nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Hitler was not uh, nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Kissinger won the Nobel Peace Prize for stopping a war that he didn't stop, that continued to rage after he received the prize. Uh, Al Gore accepted the Peace Prize on the behalf of the IPCC. And uh, I mean, it's just such a ridiculous award at this point that receiving it is act- actually probably a taint more so than an, an honor of any sort. But uh, yes, I mean, who cares? Ultimately, who cares? It's like the Academy Awards or anything else. It's just all internal politics and whatever. It has nothing to do with anything resembling what actually will bring peace about in the world. That's. I was going to say that it's mostly a popularity prize, just like we know most kind of awards and, and award shows are. James and you, I believe, have done entire episodes on that. So, of course, we'll include the links to that as we include the links to everything we talk about on these episodes in the show notes down there. So you can get those and read further into these stories, which all pretty much warrant further reading, I think, on all our parts. But, James, our second story really has it all, and I would just you know, try and keep score at home of how many potentially scandalous kind of other areas there are in this story that have yet to explode. Volkswagen CEO resigns as the company crashes into carbon emissions fraud. This via CNBC, so it can be a little jargony, but you know that it's got pretty much all the dirt inside it. German car maker Volkswagen announced that it will make a provision of 6.5 billion euros, that's $7.3 billion in the third quarter, following the revelations last week that it had misled authorities over the admissions of its diesel cars. The company added Tuesday that this provision was subject to revaluation and that it was working with the relevant authorities to clarify the irregularities in the software that recorded emissions in the car maker's diesel engines. The Environmental Protection Agency in the States has accused Volkswagen of installing software on nearly half a million diesel cars in the U.S., to evade federal emissions regulations. Up to 11 million vehicles could be affected in the scandal, and it's surrounding their emissions data. has It's raised fears, and this is a long article, James, and I'm just giving kind of the bullet points, that the damage may not be limited to that automaker, that it may damage sort of their reputation, and that their trustworthiness and all these things and efficiency are all at stake. Deutsche Bank, Germany's largest bank, downgraded Volkswagen's forecast for the entire DAX index in 2015 as the scandal unraveled. 
another guy, the whole structure of the VW company looks a bit strange, was a quote from a professor at the Center for Automotive Research. He told CNBC that. And the article goes on to continue go to, to say, James, there are concerns that much like the LIBOR scandal was initially publicized by Barclays but then found to include other top investment banks, the emissions tampering will not have been confined to Volkswagen. They go on to talk about Daimler and BMW and all the other car connections. As German automakers have been trying to convince the U.S. of the delights of clean diesel, a field where they can claim to lead, analysts worry that now these revelations will likely taint their claims for decades. Volkswagen, in closing, James has already come through one high-profile scandal involving bribery and brothels and a high-profile trial, which shined a gross light on German corporate culture. If this car maker, potentially the brand most associated with Germany, faces charges which cannot be dismissed as the work of a few rogue employees, the consequences may be felt across German industry. James, take your pick of areas. Yeah, there are a number of them to explore here, aren't there? Including the idea that just as I think we all understand, all of these crises, you know, the climate change related to crises, um, regardless of whether you believe in them or not, are cash cows for corporations that can find a way to provide a solution, no matter how doc doctored, engineered, or made up that solution is. And uh, here's just another example of that. And as you say, I mean, I would be flabbergasted if Volkswagen is o the only company that's been uh, violating, uh, doing these types of violations. So I'm sure more to see on that front. And I've just been looking up the latest with regards to this. And apparently Volkswagen stock has uh, plunged 30% since last Friday. And uh, that's 50% since it's uh, mid-March uh, uh, high. It's 52-week high. So... I think this is a, a pretty stunning blow to Volkswagen, and it's difficult to see how they're going to recover from this anytime soon or in any sort of with any sort of quick, easy, you know, change around in CEO or whatever. I think this is more of a, a structural issue. So on the economic side of it, yes, huge story. But uh, again, it's just another scam from another part of the corporatocracy. And uh, the only surprising part of that is that it was revealed in the first place. And, and again, just so many of the other areas I'm thinking of, you know, the software and the cars, and that's a whole other area of, of exploration and all those yeah. areas. That, and, well, that's a good point. If we can, if yeah. we can't trust them to even monitor the diesel emissions, how about every other function that they, they have in the software? And we already know the cars can be hacked and remotely controlled. So there you go. Uh, and I'm, you know, no economist, but when I looked at that, you can look at sort of the chart graphs of what happened after all of this broke. You can see it's, yeah, just as you said, it's going to be difficult to kind of come out of this in any way, shape, or form. But I guess, James, as somewhat a related story to classic German engineering and a musical way to segue into our good news next week segment, our final segment this week, I'll, I'll just mention that I saw the legendary Kraftwerk last weekend here at their big 3D concert, you know, the, the electronic transhuman sort of band that made songs about Deutsche Bank and the CIA. So I'll include links to a little bit of photo and video of that that I took on my Twitter feed at Media Monarchy. But James, we'll finish this week with a good news next week story. And we've been doing this all through 2015. Hashtag good news next week. And it's another great week for good news next week. Happy birthday to you. Finally, public domain as Warner Chapel stripped of copyright. Briefly from Russia Today, a surprise decision by a federal judge in L.A. says the famous song, Happy Birthday to You is not owned by any corporation, meaning anyone is allowed to sing or perform it without the fear of breaking copyright rules. The ruling was made during a lawsuit that fought to include the song in the public domain, challenging Warner Chappell's attempts to fine a group of filmmakers $1,500 for the use of the song. The decision by the L.A. judge will mean the cooperation, or rather the corporation, will lose out on around $2 million in royalties a year. The music to the Happy Birthday song, in a little background, is believed to have been composed by a pair of sisters, Mildred and Patty Hill, in around 1893. The two gave the rights to the Clayton F. Summy Company, which of course, like most things, were eventually bought by Warner Music Group in 1998, according to this lawsuit. And you can go read about all the decades-long legal wrangling in the links. But Warner Chapel has been collecting royalties for the song and receiving in excess of noted the $2 million because they were convinced it owned the legal rights to the song. And now with the win, they're actually going to try and kind of retroactively go back and get refunds 
for people. So James, I swear we mentioned this story a couple of years ago, I believe, when it was going to court, but I wasn't able to kind of quickly come up with it in the archives. But I think like last week's Dancing Baby win, this is a, another big win. Or at least the admission of an easily observable reality. Uh, I think that might be more along the lines of what this is. As I think well encapsulated by Cory Doctorow and his take on this at Boing Boing, I think the pull quote from that was something like, yes, happy birthday has been public domain for generations and everybody knew it. Well, now the U.S. legal system is finally recognizing that. So there it is. I mean, again, this should not be a, a, a big uh, a big reveal. Oh, wow, now we can use it. Um if for no other reason that, I mean, even if you believe in intellectual property, which of course does not exist and is completely a fraud, but even if you believe in it, I mean, go back to the original copyright clause to promote the progress of science and useful useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. Even if we were to allow for that, this has nothing to do with that. This is a corporation that bought up the rights to some song that was written a hundred plus years ago. It has nothing to do with promoting the uh, usefulness of uh, science and the arts or whatever. Just ridiculous on its face. But there you go. Finally, the U.S. Uh, justice system catches up to what is common sense reality. And finally, we are allowed to use this song without threat of some sort of lawsuit. So I understand it was your girlfriend's birthday yesterday, wasn't it? It was. Uh, so actually, this this case came down actually on my girlfriend's birthday. So that was fun. And that was fun to be able to kind of... A one and a two and... Happy birthday to you. You're going to do it? Happy birthday yeah. to, to you. you. Happy birthday, yeah. dear Cassie, yeah. queen of the media monarchy. Uh, happy birthday happy to you. To you. Hey, and that was free, and that doesn't cost Wow, us. we didn't pay a dime. Imagine uh, that. <laughs> James, I think for our other Good News Next Week stories, we'll remind people to check out and contribute stories to hashtag Good News Next Week. And you can read all the other things about Norway and Iceland and organic farm sales and all those other things. And of course, use hashtag New World Next Week for all the other things that we're following that probably in some ways warrant their own segments and investigations. You know, like how are misleaders who defile animals in secret rituals? So, James, of course, I'm talking about Piggate, and our usual UK tweeters are all over that disgusting story, and we'll include the links to that, as I think it's important to know that most of our so-called leaders are involved in some sort of debauchery. Shades of skull and bones, they're calling it. So, even more disgusting, James, the New York Times has a story, U.S. soldiers told to ignore sexual abuse of boys by Afghan allies, and it's a... It just continues to be shown, whether you're talking about churches or, or states or any sorts of things, that it's this pervasive abuse that it seems to pop up in all of these areas, James. Unfortunately so, and we'll continue to do so. All right. Anything else? In closing, one I know we followed for years, James, but again, further proof. And I guess maybe maybe this is how far low we've come is that we have to cheer and, and parade the fact that, you know, natural rightful things like we just kind of discussed are, are finally admitted to. But Vice magazine had a bunch of FOIAs and they further prove that the CIA helped pretty much produce and mold the Zero Dark Thirty propaganda film. And the Apple app store that recently got infected with malware Gosh, it sure looks like that malware that the CIA developed. So, last two things, James. They're calling it a Wild West culture as at least 60 U.S. police departments are asking for drone certifications. Meanwhile, there's a story about how people in New York, New Hampshire, Louisiana, Minnesota, and American Samoa are probably going to have to get passports just to fly domestically. So, flying killer robots are good, and personal liberties and freedom of movement are bad. James, that's all I got. All right. Well, then on a deprogramming note for CorbettReport.com, I should let people know that although I'm putting on a brave face, I've been under the weather for the last couple of days. So unfortunately, there will be no subscriber newsletter this weekend. And I think I have an interview coming out in the next couple of days. But other than that, I'll be taking a couple of days off, curled up in bed, trying to get better. So um, on that note, not don't look for too much from CorbettReport.com. How about on Media Monarchy? I am ramping up. I've still been moving all of the sites into the new server space and the new MediaMonarchy.com. It might look a little messy, but actually it's got the 10 years of all the work all put there. And I've had actually a lot of fun kind of 
going back through and looking at all the things that kind of documented there over the last 10 years as I look to hopefully get some better lighting and a little bit of equipment and a little bit of this and that as we try and kind of crank up Media Monarchy full on. And I hope to have kind of a big announcements about what we're going to do and kind of, you know, fundraising and all that good stuff coming up very soon in the fall. All right. Looking forward to it. Until then, let's, uh, let's do it again next week. All right. Thanks, buddy. Get well. Take care.